Good evening and welcome. Tonight is Monday, January 27th, 2020. This is the regular City Council meeting for the City of St. Peter. It is 7 o'clock p.m. We will call the meeting to order. Will all please join in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good afternoon. I'm glad. Didn't happen. We'll conduct the meeting on the floor. Maybe. <laughs> Everyone should have a copy of the agenda uh, in front of them. Are there any changes or corrections to the agenda? If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. A second. Second by Emily. All in favor of the agenda as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Agenda is approved. Next, we have the minutes from our and I'm going to make the correction right now. It should say for our January 13th, 2020 meeting, and Barb's already made the changes. Uh, those minutes approved are, are on pages five and six. Besides the one I mentioned, is there any other changes or corrections to the minutes? If not, is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second by Brad. All in favor of the minutes as written, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Those minutes are approved. Next up, we will address visitors. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the council on any agenda item? Seeing no one, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak to the council on any matter whatsoever? Seeing no one, we will move to the consent agenda. The consent agenda begins in detail on page 7 and concludes with the resolution <clears throat> on pages 25 and 26 and includes the following budgeted purchases in excess of $10,000 to Minnesota Paving and Materials for 1,200 tons of quarter inch quartzite stone for $37,200. Following advisory board appointment to the library board with a term ending December 31st, 2022 to Mary Ann Hansen. The following license applications, a solid waste hauler permit to Hanson Sanita Sanitation for fiscal year 2020. The employee advisory, anniversary, excuse me, recognition program was modified. Uh, the only changes that were made for were for year 35 and the years 40 and up, above. Uh, next up we have a municipal fee schedule uh, change uh, for Electric connection charge for single phase for $500, for three phase for $1,500, plus the regular schedule of disbursements for January 9th, 2020 through January 23rd, 2020. Are there any questions or comments concerning the consent agenda? Mr. Mayor, if I could. Yes. On that electric connection charge, that really isn't a change, that's just a correction. Sorry. We had typoed it originally. I had made a mistake with that one, and so we're correcting that appropriately. Okay. Anybody else have anything they want to add? If not, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Barb, call the roll, please. Council Member Boothlap? Aye. Council Member DeVos? Aye. Mayor Zeman? Aye. Councilmember Noel? Aye. Councilmember Johnson? Aye. Consent agenda is approved. Next we have unfinished business, which there is none. We'll move to new business, and the first thing we have is a fire hall project local sales tax option. Mayor, members, I'll kick this one off. Shannon Sweeney is here, and Sally, your finance director, is here as well, so we'll take team if you have any significant questions. This is an issue that you have talked about in the past quite a little bit, so if you don't mind, I'll kind of do an introduction, and then um, Shannon will talk a little bit about impacts, potentially, and how we assemble things. So first, um, if I can, Mayor and members, the first big issue I think that you face is making a decision as to whether you think sales tax is an appropriate revenue stream or not to pay for a fire hall. And so beyond that, um, this process, if you would move forward, would be a request to the state of Minnesota to allow you to put in place a sales tax within your jurisdiction. Um, that doesn't put the sales tax in place. You need state approval. 
and then you would need to go and have a local vote on this, which if you move forward would occur in November. Um, so your request is really asking the state to allow you to have a vote on this issue in November. Um, there are a number of things that you would have to do after that point. Again, um, with the change in rules that we've seen at the state of Minnesota as of May 30th of last year, we have to demonstrate regional impact. And I think we have a number of issues that allow you to articulate very clearly what regional impact a fire hall has. Some of those include, well, you provide services to a lot of state facilities which have statewide impact, including the regional treatment center. You have educational institutions within your community that not just serve this community, but serve a much broader area, maybe beyond certainly the state of Minnesota. Um, I think one of the other points of rationale that we might point to is um, that you certainly serve outside of the city limits. You have some townships that you provide service to, and frankly, along 169, you provide service to folks all the time along 169 um, that may have had a car accident or may have had a health issue that developed in their car and other things that you provide service to. You know, each year your fire department responds to about 70 odd fire calls a year, and maybe. 20 of those are fires. The rest are lots of other things, including CO2 detectors assisting people who might need help on 169 and other things, hazardous material response, and supporting other fire departments within your region and within your area. So those are some of the things that we point to. Um, if, if you believe that sales tax is an appropriate way to balance out revenue streams to help pay the cost for this, um, it's really the amount. And you've talked about two primary amounts, one of which would be a half cent sales tax and the other of which would be a three-quarter um, cent sales tax. And so Shannon will talk about the impacts of those in a little bit. Um, but this really is a risk analysis for you in that um, what, what gets approval of the state and what gets approval of your taxpayers because you've articulated very clearly that there will be a new fire hall in town. It's really a matter of how are we paying for that new fire hall? How are we going to make that go? And, and there really isn't a right or wrong answer for this. It really is about what your best sense of the right direction is um, to move forward. Um, if your sales tax does not pass either here or at the state level or at the local level, uh, assuming we have an election on this in November, um, the plan has been to utilize levy and that will be some of the impact that we discuss. Um, you're really on a timeline. We have to submit documentation by the end of the week to the state and so this is the appropriate time to take action. If you don't take action, there are a couple things that could happen, one of which is you could call for a special meeting a couple of days from now, which we wouldn't recommend, um, or wait another cycle if you still believe that you want to pursue that. Um, if you don't get approval from the state or from local voters, then again, the discussion and the plan has been that you'll use local tax levy dollars um, to help fund the hospital. Or, I'm sorry, the, the fire hall. And so those are the activities that you have going on, and I think you articulate that very well. Um, Shannon has a letter in your packet on page 27 that, that talks about the overall scope of the project and some of the impacts. So I don't know, Shannon, if you have anything that you want to add above and beyond that, that would be fantastic. Well, I'll keep it brief. Uh, Shannon Sweeney with David Drown Associates. We're municipal financial advisors to the city. Uh, for some time, we've worked with this council and staff on different ideas and thought processes for how we'd finance a fire station. Uh, just to highlight from the memo, you know, as budgeted or as current budget is for the project, uh, we would have debt service payments if we're successful in getting a rural development loan of about $378,000 per year for 40 years to rural development. That's assuming current rates and terms that are available through the program of 40 years at 2.75% interest. Um, I can assure you it's a journey to get through this process. We'll probably have some modifications in route, uh, unforeseen feedback from different folks, including rural development, the state legislature, even voters of the city of St. Peter as we go through this process. So we're by no means close to the finish line. Uh, we have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, but ultimately, uh, I think the decision before you this evening is one, whether or not we want to uh, proceed with pursuing a sales tax for paying for a portion of this project or all of it uh, and you know we provide a little bit of discussion in this memo with regard to the impacts associated with one of two decisions or with one of those decisions um, again I mentioned that the annual debt service is about three hundred seventy eight thousand dollars a year a half percent sales tax is estimated to generate two hundred sixty thousand dollars a year uh, 
that difference in between what we collect in sales tax would be proposed for tax levy. That tax levy would be levied against all property tax paying properties in the community. We have some significant folks, you know, of a regional nature that we're hanging our hat on that don't contribute property tax wise, but have an opportunity through the people they draw to the community and through the use of a sales tax to contribute towards that project. Um, ultimately, that $118,000 difference, almost $119,000 per year difference in debt service, uh, as levied against property taxpayers in the community would have, uh, we think, a, a, a bearable impact given the scope and size of the project in that a $100,000 home would be impacted to the tune of about $14.27 per year in property tax, $200,000 home about $336 per year, uh, a half million dollar commercial property about $184 per year and a million dollar commercial property at about $384 per year. So not insignificant numbers, but given the scope of the project, uh, how long we intend this facility to last in the community, the one we have now has been here uh, 80 years, something like that, Plus. that building's been in service. We expect the, now, the next one to have a similar service life. We're building something that'll last a very long time. Uh, you know, we think these are reasonable impacts to have on our taxpayers for such a valued service in the community. So, uh, more than happy to answer questions regarding the information I provided. Uh, again, there's resolutions associated with proceeding with a, a request for a sales tax. So, okay. questions? Uh, so this 260,000, I'm assuming that's just a first year estimate on the sales tax and that yes. over the course of time with inflation, we might be able to see that that could very well change th those Correct. revenues actually increase yes and interest on the debt will be at a fixed rate with rural development so hopefully that would work in our favor to be clear that two hundred and eighty thousand dollars is based on 2018 yep. sales numbers mm -hmm. not 2019 because those have not been all readily available yet anyone else emily um, I noticed in the previous packets that the earlier projection was uh, lower than $9 million. Why has that amount increased? Well, so let me take that one. Um, there are a couple of reasons for that, and we saw projections anywhere from 6.8 to 8.8 .8 was kind of our target range. But I think it's important to remember a couple of different things. This is not the final. These are estimates. But these are estimates for construction in 2021. So it factors in inflation as well for 2021. Um, under no circumstances that we plan to build in 2020. And so, frankly, these are the best guesses that we have based on the scope that has been developed. You do not have a full set of plans yet. And as those are developed, that will modify those estimates should you continue to move forward. Um, but we're at least today comfortable at this number. <coughs> we. Uh the building committee has gone through and, and asked for more details from what we had um, in the last couple meetings that we've had. Um, I was a little <laughs> concerned too when we come up with this total. Um, but yeah, it's it's something that, it's a lot of money. And uh, therefore I'm leading it to my next point, I guess, is that I don't have a calculator with me. and. For even numbers here, Shannon, you've got a $200,000 house on a projected increase. If we would uh, only do a half percent, then that increase would be $36. That's living $118,000. Right. So if we tripled that to reflect a, you know, more than triple that to reflect a full debt service payment to rural development, you could say the tax impact would be more than triple, you know, what we're projecting. Okay. So. What I was getting at, you know, somebody that's going to be paying $36 extra, and instead of asking for a half percent, okay, sure. ask for three quarters, how, and I can say I don't have a calculator, but for someone to spend $36 a year uh. in extra <laughs> property tax sure. how much could they buy it or what what would they have to purchase <laughs> you know I'm, get, I'm getting at they you know what i'm getting yes. at and that's where i come down to the situation of the sales tax being more an equal distribution um, of people uh, because we have so much exempt property in this city um, you know, but we do have a 
lot of residents, uh, I guess, relative to, to the uh, exempt property. But that, that's what I'm getting. You know, to, you know, we can say it's, sure. yeah, it's only going to increase 36 bucks, but am I going to spend that unless you buy a car? You know, maybe you know, you're going to reach something like that, but otherwise I doubt if you'd even reach that $36 extra sure. you know, for what you're paying. So that was one of my points. Questions or other thoughts or comments? I know we talked about this at the uh, goal, or not the goal, the uh, workshop the other night, and we were kind of bouncing <laughs> back and forth between the, the two numbers. Uh, I guess, like Todd said, first of all, we have to uh, agree that this is the route we want to go. It's part of a part of the resolution, basically, is what it is. You know, once we commit to the resolution, that's committing us to that. Um, but it. Uh, Anyone else? Brett? Um, I guess just a uh, point of clarification. Should we discuss percentages now, or do we need a motion to start discussion? No, we can discuss percentages now. Um, so, because I've basically, I've been, oh, sorry. Pull it down, pull it down. Oh, okay. There you go. I've been tossing and turning on this one for the last day, and I've been basically been changing my mind every half hour. Honestly, I've, I've really struggled with this. Um, last week, 100% on board with the three quarters percent sales tax. Um, but then I started looking at it, particularly the tax map, sales tax map that Todd sent out, um, which quite honestly showed sh uh, south of Lake Mille Lacs, only Minneapolis is at 8% or higher. Everyone else is. Um, finance side of me says 3 quarters percent, exactly what Chuck says, even distribution. Um, and honestly, it's insane for someone to drive to Mankato to save 25 cents on a $100 purchase. Um, Unfortunately, the city does have an image, rightly or not, um, of people accused St. Peter being a high-tax city. The best way to actually reinforce that image is to push our sales tax above 8%. And, the, and in that way, I, I believe we should stick with the half percent. That was actually one of the reasons why you know, I wanted to clarify that the 260000 was was what it is now because as time goes by that will raise and that will take out part of it. Um, I could go either way. I, my, but at this point I'm leaning towards half percent because in, in, in many instances image does matter particularly when you're drawing people to town. Um, the, it's going to be it's going to be a fixed payment so over time as the city grows that extra portion A it's going to be shrunk by increasing sales tax and B it's going to be spread out by growth in the city. I also started to get concerned about, you know, this could get tripped up by a bunch of senators getting a B in their bonnet and wanting to make an example of anybody who's going over a half percent this session and saying, well, everybody else is at a half percent, why do you want more? I understand why more, and if, if this board, if this council would go with three quarters percent, I'd be willing to even go up and argue in front of a co committee for three quarters percent. Uh, but at this point, I think our best course of action would be one half percent. Okay. Uh, let me, a couple of things I wanted to point out. That map that Todd sent did not include what municipalities are doing. Actually, the, the struggle with that map from the Department of Revenue is that you got to zoom in and really click it right, up. But right, but it's yeah. the overall layout. Yeah, the map. it doesn't it show showed, that to begin it with. It showed Blue Earth County and Nicollet County being the same. But it didn't show the one I saw. I didn't zoom in. It didn't show the half percent more that Mankato already has. Yeah, when I zoomed in, well, I saw Nicollet at seven point three seven five. Right. And I saw Mankato. I did see Mankato at seven point eight seven five. Okay. I, yeah. I did yeah. not. I didn't yeah. zoom in that far. So yeah. So that, so that's what happened. Is when I actually zoomed in, quite honestly, Southern Minnesota stuck out like a sore thumb. Right. That a lot of a lot of the places don't. Mankato is Mankato and North Mankato are the two highest at seven eight seven five. Right. Um, really, the only one's over eight. There's two districts next to Lake Mille Lacs. There's Virginia, there's Duluth, and there's Cook County, which is actually the arrowhead in Minnesota. So, so, that, so that was actually my biggest concern is when I, when I look and when I, because I did zoom in, and when I zoomed in, that's what I saw was, was, was uh, and, and I sat there and thought, we'd, re we'd stick out on that map, of course, until Mankato or North Mankato went in and well, asked for more. Well, the, so. the other thing I was going to say is, is I agree with you on the, on the you know, some articles that I've seen about the, the states, the legislatures, some of their feelings on, on increases. We've just learned in the last 
20 minutes that there is one community asking for 2% so of an increase. Yep. Yeah. So maybe we won't stick out quite as bad. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's what I, and before you even started talking, here's, okay. here's what I, because what, what you had said, Brad, and what, you know, hopefully the sales tax revenue will increase. The three quarters of a percent puts us over 8% but an increase of 0.625 puts us exactly at 8%. If we would, instead of the mm -hmm. half, if we split the difference, if we go to five yeah. ace, <laughs> of a, or yeah. 0.625 puts us exactly at eight, which I don't think, you know, it still may be not quite enough, but it's still, if, if these costs that we have of the $9 million come down, you know, it may be enough to, to cover it. It may, it's, it, uh, it'd be closer, yeah. yeah. And that's kind of what I settled on when I when I looked at at this, when I read some of those articles. So that's my feeling yeah. is is uh, is point six two five. Yeah, the positive of going higher as well is if we do end up essentially generating sales tax in excess of in in in, in excess of the amount due, it will pay it down early. Right. I mean, right now, forty years, quite honestly, you and Chuck, it's beyond our life expectancy. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying how long you want to live. I'm just saying our actual life. I may not make it out of here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, that is one thing that honestly really appealed to me about three quarters percent was the concept of actually early, early debt repayment because that that would probably push it towards. Um, so that's why I say I struggle with it because right. I have the one side of me which says you know, let let let's go for uh -huh. it, and and the other side that you know questions whether. Yeah, my, my other yeah. feeling with the three quarter was, I don't know if it's a yes, complete yes or no deal at the legislature, but let them tell us it's too much. Yeah, if they don't agree, if they want to do a half or 0.625 or whatever, I don't know, Todd, what your uh, history or if your uh, knowledge of that process is. There is not a specific process to modify. So if, if okay. there was a pushback, so let's say something like a tax chair came back and said, no, I just don't think that's going to fly, we would then need to receive assistance from our local elected officials mm -hmm. to modify that either in a tax committee or at some other location okay. um, through the legislative process. Our opportunities to submit a different number to negotiate at that level, where we come back to the city council and know it's 6.21 or whatever, um, that's gone because we bypassed that timeline for at least this session. Right, and that's the other thing I was going to point out. If we agreed to do this, is what we if we if we agree not not as a group but individually, if you're in favor of that, we do need to contact Representative Brand and Senator uh, Frentz and get their support behind this because they're the ones that will be basically submitting it for us and hope and the conversations that I guess Todd and I have had they are in support of it um, but we need to show our support uh, to them and another thing would also be and uh, Steve and I went up when we talked about the pavilion about getting funds for the pavilion Steve and I went up and Todd and um, Clark Johnson was there, I believe, um, that um, we sat in front of the committee um, and kind of presented our case and why we were there. So, you know, that's all part of it. So be prepared, Kathy Carey. Do we know if other cities have had success modifying the rate after it's gone to the legislature? And do we know of any examples of that? Shannon, yeah. I would say that we're in a much different process now. It legislatively changed last year. Right. Previously, a city held its referendum first and then it went to the legislature. And I believe at that point they felt as if their hands were tied because you'd already gone through this process to have a local election and far be it from them to change it at that point, which is now the <laughs> they, they've swapped that around so they have a chance to say no before we put a lot of work into it. And so I think they've kind of uh, increased their ability to, uh, to say no uh, and have that leverage to do other things or tell you to pursue other alternatives at this point, so. You know, as I, as I write in the memo to you, um, it is new process and we don't know and there really isn't precedent under this process. So 
I can't give you a clear direction. This is really about what your best instinct is in this situation. And again, there isn't a right or wrong answer. It's what do you feel is the appropriate balance? Right. I guess well, as I've been reflecting on this, the, the five versus the um, 0.75, I, I guess I, I've had a lot of the same thoughts going back and forth as Brad has. Ultimately, I have felt like um, maybe the half cent is a little more conservative, more likely to be approved by the residents of St. Peter, and for that reason, um, I've been leaning toward that. Yeah. Well, I would, like I say, part of the other part of this argument is, for me anyway, that half cent, um, yeah, would be more palatable, mm -hmm. but you better tell them to, then your taxes are going to be going up. So that's the other the other part of it. And I, I think getting it passed, I, I'm not concerned, quite honestly, getting it passed a voter referendum. I think in the end, an, an argument will be, I, I think in the end, most voters will say they'd rather the, have the sales tax at whatever level. I, if it goes at three quarters percent, I'm confident the voters will approve it. Um, my biggest concern, quite honestly, is getting it through the legislature mm -hmm. and getting it through the legislative process. And I'd, I'd say that's where that that's that's where it comes. I, I actually think uh, the voters are gonna are, are going to would rather see see the sales tax when it's actually explained to them, and particularly when they understand that if you don't approve the sales tax and everybody shares, then it's going to be a significant property tax burden. So. I think either way, I, I think voter approval, I, my, my biggest concern is, is, is actually the legislative process. So. Yeah. Um, last year they had one request, if I remember what Representative Brand told me. Um, and it was a half percent, if I, I remember. Think that's right. Um, and he, when I talked to him, well, it was last fall, I guess it was, um, it was, yeah, because we only had one this last year and that was no problem type of thing is the way he kind of conveyed it to me or did convey it to me um, okay any other uh, questions or thoughts Emily way in here too yeah definitely. Um, I have also been mulling this over a lot and um, asking for some public opinion mm -hmm. and I haven't received a lot of feedback um, mostly I didn't have a lot of time you know coming up on this um, but it sounds like the few people who have responded are, are okay with the three quarters percent. Um, I would be okay with that personally. Um, I could see it going either way. I almost like this idea of splitting the difference at 0.625, like you say, since I, I, I guess I could still, I could just go either way. Yeah, whether it, whether it, uh, it um, makes a difference or not, to me, if we, <laughs> if we would go with something like a 0.625, to me, it almost seems like we've given it more thought, mm -hmm. <laughs> which we kind of are, yeah. you know, on, on our process here between what's palatable and what uh, what the legislature would would potentially uh, uh, accept. But um, you know, that's our decision. So, Carrie, uh, a couple points that I wanted to make as well. Um, I, I guess I'm in more in favor of the 0.5 percent. Uh, I think about. I do think about the impact of property taxes and the increasing property taxes because I heard overwhelmingly that that was a concern um, last fall. And, and so I do think about that in considering my vote um, or my discussion on this. I also think about, we, we look at this in, as an issue of fairness and who is contributing and, you know, to the property tax. Um, but also, I sometimes I think about sales tax too, even though it amounts to so little uh, for, per person perhaps. Um, a sales tax doesn't, um, isn't adjusted based on income or property value. Um, everybody pays the same. And so being really careful about determining that percentage, even though lo on a local level it doesn't amount um, a to a whole lot, but there still is somewhat of an impact, not only on per person, but retailers. I'm in favor of a sales tax, um, but want to be careful about the percentage. Um, sales tax, um, gasoline tax, you know, for comparison, is, is to me is a regressive tax. Sales tax, there is no sales tax on food and clothing. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah, uh, it it still is going to impact people or or 
you know, different ways. And no matter if your income is at this level or this level, percentage-wise, it's going to impact you more here uh, because just on a straight percentage. But I can say the, the small amount is, is, you know, what I weigh with too. So. May I say? Yeah, that? yeah. Uh, the other consideration I have too is, is contrary to Brad, your point, um, considering what will be uh, passed by the voters, what's um, what's going to be set up for success at the legislature and with the voters. I think people do look at um, how we compare to other areas in the region, and in our region, the only one I saw that was 0.75 or higher, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but Rochester, uh, Marshall area. So otherwise, we're surrounded by 0.5%. We are. Any other comments? We have a resolution that right now calls out for a half percent um, increase. And the numbers reflected uh, down in the whereas is reflect um, a half percent increase. So I guess I'm going to ask is there a motion? It can be, a, you know, is there a motion for the existing or if that, does anyone make a motion? You can amend the motion if you would like because we've had varying thoughts <laughs> uh, to where it exists. Mr. Mayor, if I can, from a point of process, we do have a resolution ready that fills in the appropriate numbers for three quarter oh, percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you decide to do something other than those two, you've got to give us some latitude to double check the numbers and so you would be approving a resolution that allows us to fill in the appropriate number based on that 625 or, or whatever number you set. Sure. We want to make sure that we have that appropriately calculated and want to kind of double check that before we go too far. But I do have a resolution already to go as we discussed at your workshop for a three-quarter cent as well. Yeah. One, one last thing, I was talking to a retailer today, a uh, business owner, and they said just make it a flat eight <laughs> percent. You know, just make it simple, so we don't have all these point, you know, all these other uh, so decimal point or decimal point with three numbers behind it. Just make it a flat eight percent. Anyway, with what Todd said and uh, with everything else being said, I'm uh, I'm going to read it out this way: the resolution supporting the authority to impose a local sales tax to fund specific capital improvements, specifically the new fire hall. Um, in order to raise and the raising of the established sales tax appears on pages 30 and 31. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Any more discussion or comments? Call the roll, please, Barbara. Councilmember DeVos? Aye. Mayor Zeman? Nay. Councilmember Noel? Aye. Councilmember Johnson? Aye. Councilmember Brooke Flat? Aye. Resolution passes by with one nay. Thanks everyone for their input and their comments. So Mr. Mayor, that. just so that I can feel good about as we communicate to the public and everybody knows, you had a lot of discussion back and forth. What was approved, what was in the packet, which is a half cent. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Next up, we have the purchase of a library services agreement with Nicollet County. Todd. Mayor, members, the information is in your packet. This is something that we've done annually for now just at about 20 years. Um, depends on how much explanation you want, but essentially this is a services agreement where Nicollet County provides you funds based on their minimum maintenance of effort in relation to library services. And so that number has changed slightly over the last number of years, as you may see from the documentation included in your packet. Um, they raised it $5,000 from the 18 year to the 19 year. You may also be aware that we have requested more funding than that, but that's what they have allowed for you. They have a similar agreement with North Mankato. Um, the information is provided in your packet. I'd be happy to answer any questions or concerns. We continue to have overall concerns that the increases that they provided over the last 10 plus years have not kept pace with even inflation or additional costs, but it sure is great that they provide you some money and it is great that they increased it in the 2019 year, even though that is not their plan to increase it in the 2020 year, 
this agreement is for the 2020 year. Um, there's a resolution in your packet providing assistance. I will mention that if you don't approve the agreement, frankly, under the state rules, people who live outside of the city can still use your library and you just won't have that revenue stream. And so there's really not a whole lot for you to do um, other than um, express any thoughts that you have, but um, it'd be very difficult for the library to go without that $50,000. That would be a pretty tight pinch for you. Again, the resolution's included in your packet, and that resolution's on page 37. Questions? Here. One question, and it's on page 33. Second paragraph after the chart. In the last sentence, when you say, we did also ask for additional funding, is the we including North Mankato? Um, it is, in this instance, meant to include only the city of St. Peter because that's who I write for. But mm -hmm. it is true that both the city of St. Peter and North Mankato made a joint request. In, in uh, this last year? For the 2020 For 2020, year. correct. Okay. Yes. Emily. Uh, why is it that they denied the <laughs> request? Good question. <laughs> I'm not able to really speak to the county's rationale for that. Um, in 2018 for 2019, we participated in one of their budget workshops and discussed this issue. In 2019 for 2020, that offer was not extended to us. I hate to qualify questions, but that was a very good question. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> I didn't answer very well, Chuck. I, no, you County didn't. Commissioners you were very, very, very diplomatic. Uh, the, uh, the only thing I have, and uh, it's a process question, I guess, more than anything, and maybe the city attorney can answer this. On page 36, on way on the bottom, it has signatures. Do we just let somebody write John on there, or should they put their whole name? Or uh, the I, I won't let the, put the city attorney on the spot in this instance, but... Frankly, um, the signing of this is ministerial in nature. If they have passed a resolution that says this is what they want to agree to, that takes precedence over the signature. Right. But I appreciate your perspective on that. Okay. Um, any other questions? The resolution authorizing execution of library services contract appears on page 37. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Any other questions or comments? Call the roll, please, Bart. Mayor Zeman? Aye. Council Member Noel? Aye. Council Member Johnson? Aye. Council Member Bruce? Aye. Council Member DeVos? Aye. Resolution is approved. Next up, we have a 2020 equipment certificate purchase for a pool heater. Mr. Moulton. Thank you, Shannon. Mayor Zeman and City Council, uh, we're here tonight to complete a second phase of our pool heater exchange program. Uh, last year, as you guys remember, uh, we replaced the diving pit heater and got that installed this last year. It worked really well. Uh, staff this year went out for written, uh, developed uh, written proposals, talked to two companies about uh, what we needed down there. Um, as you can see from the bids here, uh, Horizon Commercial Pool Supply uh, was the low um, proposal. And uh, our goal here today would be to get you to approve the resolution on page 39. We would use equipment certificate funding to complete the purchase. Mayor members, the reason this comes as a separate agenda item to you is because under council rules, equipment certificates are required to be a separate agenda item and may not come as a consent agenda item, even though it was budgeted. Questions? Not the resolution authorizing 2020 equipment certificate purchase for a pent air power max pool heater appears on page 39. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. Second. Now, any questions, comments? Call the roll, please, Barb. Councilmember Noah? Aye. Councilmember Johnson? Aye. Councilmember Aye. Councilmember DeVos? Aye. Hi. Resolution is approved. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Next up, we have a couple of, we'll deal with them individually, River's Edge Hospital Equipment Purchase Request. And who do we have here tonight? <laughs> Mayor Siemens, council members, my name is Lori Zook. I'm the chief financial officer and currently the acting CEO of River's Edge Hospital. Um, 
as per our agreement with the city actually we are part of the city so it's our own agreement anything over fifty thousand dollars in a capital nature comes to you after our commission is approved so that's why I'm here today the first item that we're asking for is a piece of software this is a Cisco identity services engine software purchase and you'll have to forgive me because my text the guy is not here but to the best of my recollection what this does is we have various vendors that have access to our network so our nurse call system our meal ordering and and dietary plan versa badge which tracks our docs in the ED so that we can do time studies they all have an ability to get in to troubleshoot their own software unfortunately we don't have a great system for keeping them from seeing other people's stuff and this will fix that that's about as concise as I can be I'm willing to try to answer questions I sat in on the hospital Commission meeting and we did have Kevin 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 because there was a lot of bewilderment about this so Kevin who's the tech guy came in and explained it and after that point everyone was was reassured that this was something that was definitely needed to proceed so other than that are there questions I'm sorry mayor members go ahead Emily I'm sorry I understand that Cisco is kind of an industry standard have you explored other options like other brands just out of curiosity now and the reason we don't is I some of the IT stuff that we have is very specific as to what platforms it will work with and so because most of our other cyber security software works with this platform we kind of stick with it otherwise it creates more problems than it resolves anyone else mr. mayor the only other item that I'd like to point out is that this purchase would be purchased with hospital funds the resolution approving the purchase of software to be used for securing access to hospital users and devices for Rivers Edge appears on page 41 is there a motion for approval so moved second now any more questions or comments call the roll please Barb Councilmember Johnson aye Councilmember Buchla aye Councilmember DeVos aye Mayor Zeno aye Councilmember Newell aye resolution is approved and Lori has another one for us I do the second item is actually two items in in our expansion project we have we will end up with four operating theaters we have opened to or we have continuously have to open through the end of the project until we have four these carts hold the anesthesia drugs it's an omni cell product which allows secure access to the medications that the anesthesiologist use and so we keep one in every OR and then it tracks who's been in and out of it it helps us with waste track wastage make sure that nobody's diverting or that there's not some other problem with the medications themselves these are probably about as wide as this table and about as tall they're not very big but they do keep very secure the drugs that are required to put people to sleep during surgery we purchased two last year and we would like to purchase the last two to round out the ORs there's about a three month lead time on these and this also is funded by hospital funds questions if not the resolution approving the purchase of anesthesia workstations for Rivers Edge appears on page 44 is there a motion for approval so moved second now any questions call the roll please Barb Aye. 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 Resolution is approved. Thank you, Lori. That concludes our new business. Next up, we have reports. The only thing I have is 
I'd like to thank the fire department last Saturday, a couple, 22 days ago. Uh, they had their annual fishing contest down at Hallett's and uh, my wife and I went down there just to show a little support and uh, observe and it was quite the turnout. It was uh, not the greatest weather but it wasn't too bad, a little breezy down there. And uh, they had about 130 to 140 kids that uh, were participating and it was looked kind of busy out on the, out on the ice. But uh, fire department, there was a lot of volunteering going on by on behalf of the fire department and uh, really appreciate all the efforts they do for that. They don't really always get recognition for some of the things they contribute to in the community. That's all I have. Mayor and members, I have a few reports that I want to mention and then yield the floor to any members that might want to visit about the latest education opportunity they had. But first of all, advisory board vacancies. We still have one opening on the Economic Development Authority and one on the Planning and Zoning Commission. So folks that might be interested, uh, please give my office a call. Um, you can go online, I think. I think we have the form. Maybe it's not, quite, it's not on. We just started our new website, so there's a few things that are still coming. Um, but give us a call and we'll be happy to share information with you about what what's entailed in that time commitment when that is and and help you fill out a little little postcard if needed um, to be able to sort through folks so we want to mention those two again economic development authority as one opening and planning and zoning commission as an opening i also want to mention with um, the onset of winter and um, winter fest that the chamber sponsors we have the regular um, the annual medallion hunt. So I don't know how many of you here have hunted for the medallion and have been successful. I'm trying to look around the table and see if any of you have been on the front page of the paper holding no up success. the medallion. No success. Um, but we do want to mention that they put this on public property. It will not be behind a fenced in area. It won't be behind a locked door. Um, it won't be on the roof of anything. Um, but um, no, no digging in dirt is allowed. You can dig in snow. But we've had, in past years, we have people that just went a little bit crazy and we want to make sure that people understand that there are kind of rules around this. So again, not behind locked doors, not behind fences, um, no digging is allowed. Um, the medallion is hidden above ground and so no digging anywhere on property is necessarily needed. However, if it snows in the interim, it could get an inch or two of snow on top of it. Those kind of things can happen. And please be respectful of public property and um, of others as you're out there hunting with flashlights and, and other mechanisms to find the medallion. And I think the first, I'm trying to think when the first clue comes out. Friday. Is it Friday? Friday? Thanks, Barb. Friday is when the first clue comes out. I think it's on the Chamber's website. So watch for that. It's really kind of fun. There are lots of people that are very dedicated to looking for this. So it's fantastic fun. So again, those are kind of the basic rules to follow. Um, I also want to mention that on the 30th, on Thursday, we have a Minnesota Housing Finance meeting here in St. Peter. Um, we'll have about... Um, right now, I think it's around 70 folks that will be here at the community center, and some of that will be learning about some of the housing things that you have all done here. And it's a sharing opportunity and a learning opportunity for many communities. We'll have people here from the western part of the state. We'll have people here from Wilmer. Uh, we have a couple people here from the northern area of the state, along with Minnesota Housing Finance and some of our other partners that we've worked with on housing projects. So I wanted to mention that. When on Thursday was that? Um, it's from 8 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. And if you're interested, um, please give me a call. It's a, um, the, the reason that I bring it up is that if you want to stop by for a few seconds, you can meet and greet or see some folks. Um, but they have a list of kind of activities and sessions that are going on as a part of that. It's sponsored by Minnesota Housing Finance. And where was the location? Um, it is at the Senior Center. Senior Center. Yeah. Um, the last one that I have, item number four, although it says others, um, I'd like to offer the floor to any of the newly elected officials who attended the newly elected officials conference through League of Minnesota Cities on Friday and Saturday. Um, it's something that we really encourage newly elected officials to go to, and we had a great turnout, four for four. There you go. Chuck, so we did really well with that, so thank you guys for committing. It's a lot of time and energy and effort to do that. And so I'd like to yield if you have any comments or ideas or thoughts that you want to share from that. Um, I yield the floor to council members. I'd like just to make note, the four of us were never together at one time <laughs> as, a, as a whole. That so, is great. We so, want you to divide and exactly. conquer. Yeah. So, so as far as there was no quorum together at any no, time. No, no, no. So. These are all okay. And it's a learning <laughs> opportunity. We, we learned all about open meeting laws. And, yep. you know, we made sure we, although I think they just like to avoid me anyways. But. <laughs> <laughs> um, I found it really valuable. Um, uh, the, I mean, the speakers were, were, were great, but honestly it was meeting meeting uh, 
officials, council members from other cities, mayors from other cities, both experienced and new ones, um, getting their perspectives, uh, you know, understanding, seeing what someone from a city of 500, all the extra work they have to do versus a city such as St. Peter, which we have a significantly larger staff to do things. Um, nearly choked when a new, uh, newly elected council member from Golden Valley said he spent $18,000 on his campaign. But uh, overall, I just thought it was the actually getting to talk to officials who are in your position, either they're new or ones that have been there a while. I just really enjoyed that. And I, that was, I think, where I gained so much information was just speaking with people in the same position. Thank you. But the, the guy, was it a guy, the man, woman from Golden Valley? It was, no, it was a guy. Okay. Yeah. Was his last name Bloomberg? <laughs> <laughs> Just Anyone to, else want to contribute? Carrie. Just to add to that, um, I would say the, in addition to um, connecting with other elected officials, the content was outstanding, but really understanding what the league's, League of Minnesota Cities resources are for newly elected, um, city staff, um, longtime elected, that, that was for me one of the best parts um, is understanding what those resources are and where to find them. I would agree. I'm, I'm already signed up for at least one webinar, so <laughs> I think uh, a lot of great resources out there, very valuable experience, and, and I'll second what Brad said, meeting with meeting other people from all over the state, cities like ours, cities very different, was uh, very valuable, so I'm grateful for the opportunity. Emily? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I echo what everyone else has said. It was a very valuable experience. I enjoyed the sessions, um, getting to do some math. Um, that was... It was good to brush up on some of that. I think we didn't we calculate uh, how to figure out property tax. I think that was it. Now um, I understand what how the ta what the tax rate actually means. <laughs> right. right. Um, I think um, in the when we first arrived, Shannon and I sat at a table with the longest standing mayor in the state at 41 years. So that was that was something. They were still standing. <laughs> they were. They were. Years. Well, we appreciate, uh, like Todd said, uh, four for four. Uh, I don't know if that's happened before. Maybe nope, it has. I don't but, think uh, so. Uh, um, anyway, um, do you have anything else, Todd? Before? No, that was it. Uh, the, what I will ask then does any besides this, does anybody else have anything they wanted to share or add? Uh, if not, the next thing we have is uh, I'm going to call for a resolution calling for a closed session. Um, this resolution. We will be going down to the uh, Traverse de Sioux room. We will not take, come back into open session. The only thing we'll come back into open session for is to adjourn. So uh, we are not going to come back into open session to make any uh, formal announcements on what we decide, if anything. Yeah, this. there's no action planned under the, after right. this other than adjournment. With that being said, the resolution calling for a closed session for the purpose to develop or consider offers or counter offers for purchase or sale of real estate or personal property, in this case real estate, and we're specifically talking about the wastewater, the old wastewater treatment ponds in Lesueur County, appears on page 45. Is there a motion for approval? So, so moved. Thanks. Second. Brad, second. Second. Okay. Any questions about the process or anything else at this point? Call the roll, please, Barb. Councilmember DeVos. Aye. Mayor Zeman? Aye. Member Aye. Member Johnson? Aye. Member Aye. Resolution is approved. As I said before, we will go into recess uh, at 7.54 p.m. on Monday, January 27th, This is really part of the city wellness program, isn't it? We have to have to